We want a lot of fast break points, but we can't just come out and try to try to attack that way. We need to learn to play defense and let that lead to offense. And to get better in all areas. We've, we've, we've done a much better job rebounding in, in each game this I think we've led in each game this year. So kind of continue, but get all those small areas taken care of. And then KISS, you've heard of KISS. We want to keep it simple, silly. That's what we yep. want to do. Starting lineups next, and we'll tip this thing off stra uh, straight ahead right here on the Aggie Sports Network from Learfield IMG College. College brought to you by Wilson Motors. We make car buying easy. Aggies with Sean Bairstow in the starting lineup tonight, as well as Brock Miller, Namiya Kader, Raleigh Wooster, and Justin Bean. Those are your five starters tonight, uh, as the Aggies will not have the services of Marco Anthony in this game tonight, among others. I noticed he wasn't out there warming up. So with that, Utah State set to take the court. We're ready to get this thing started in a game that I think uh, you know you go into it thinking you're going to win and win fairly easily, but it's about execution, about doing so cleanly, and uh, Aggies have some stuff to clean up and get ready for uh, for the remainder of the season. So a big one coming up here tonight. Aggies take the court. Aggies in their all whites with blue trim. The Yotes of the College of Idaho in their purple and gold trim. Namiyash Keda will tip up against number 21, Connor Dulcier, and we're ready to get this thing going. Tip off controlled by the Aggies. Raleigh Wooster's got the ball, and the Aggies will be moving left to right. Picked up by Derek Wadsworth. Over to Bearstow. Bearstow looking for Kata. Can't get it to him. Bearstow swings it back up top to Wooster. Over to Brock. Brock wants to drive. Pulls up from the elbow. Bounce off the rim. Won't go. And the rebound comes down to the Yotes. Wadsworth brings the ball quickly down the court. Gets a screen from Jalen Galloway, their big scorer. Finally down low to their big man. Spin around, loses the handle. Do he step out? Nope, he traveled with it. Either way, it's a turnover, and the ball goes back to Utah State. Yeah, good double team there by Justin. Caused a little havoc and created a little extra drag step as he was looking for an open player. Wooster, left to right, up top to Bearstow on the right wing. Bearstow hands off to Brock. Brock pulls up, takes the jumper, and knocks this one down. Missed his first one, but buries the second one, and the Aggies up 2-0. Yeah, again, we've, we've got some purpose in the offense. Brock coming out, looking to score. Dieselnier hands over to Wadsworth on the right wing. Backs over to Time. Ronaldo Time takes the long three, misses it, and Bearstow pulls down the rebound, and the Aggies quickly going the other way. Bearstow picks up his dribble, tries to get it to Kata. Finally, uh, Wooster is able to get it to Kata on the right low block. Here comes Lake, double team to Bean. Bean throws the dunk down. Great pass as Kata wait for the double team to come and then kicked it over to Bean. Bean gets the dunk. Yeah, definitely some purpose there, right? Kata felt the double team come, turns baseline, easy pass to Bean. Jake O'Neill, number 12, swings it to Dissonier in the left low block. Tries to spin around Kata, finally kicks it over to the right wing. Back to O'Neill. O'Neill drives on Bean, loses the handle, picks it up. But they'll call a foul on the drive, and it'll stay with the Yotes. Justin Bean gets hit with his first foul. Uh, interesting play by the, the Coyotes on the last play. With, it's called secondary regular. It's an old UNC play. It's got some back screen action, which we haven't had to defend for a while. Wadsworth inbounds at Galloway. Galloway drives on. Brock Miller takes the jumper from the baseline and knocks it down. He's their big score, averaging nearly 20 points a game. Yeah, nice little fadeaway there. Created his own space, created his own shot. Bean on the right wing wants to drive against Galloway. Kicks it back to Bearstow to Raleigh Wooster. Wooster on the entry pass to Kata is deflected away and goes out of bounds. It'll stay with Utah State. Yeah, kind of pulled the chair out from under Kata there. He's getting position and he just keeps going deeper and deeper. That's the old, uh, just kind of pulled the chair out. That's a little NIA move yeah. right there. Carl Malone used to be really great about that. The best. Bean swings it back to Bearstow. Bearstow comes around a screen to Brock. Brock down low to Kata. Kata, no double team yet. Kicks it all the way back to Wooster, who's got a good look for a three, and yes, sir, he knocks it down. Aggies up 7-2, 17-45, and counting left to go here in the first half. Yeah, Kata really is a great passer out of the double team. Jake O'Neill works it to Wadsworth. Wadsworth to Galloway, long three, and he swishes it from the right wing. You can tell this kid's a player. He can, he can score many different ways. It's a, You know, it's amazing. There's a lot of good basketball players out there, Scotty. Wooster picked up by O'Neill. 
swings it to Bean, Bean to Bearstow. Bearstow on the left wing, comes around to Bean's screen, up top to Kata, who comes out to get it, who gives it to Miller. Miller arrives, takes another jumper from inside the three-point line, misses it, and I think they're going to hit who with a foul? I think it's going to go against Bean? No. It'll go against uh, the College of Idaho, and the ball will stay with Utah State. A little rebounding foul there. There's uh, two players boxing out, Justin Bean, and <laughs> they end up with the foul. So. Yeah. He definitely has an Official stared rebound. at Bean for quite a while. It got me nervous there for a second. He was trying to choose which player that went against their best player. Kata spins into a double team, kicks it to Wooster. Another three opportunities, a little short, and Wooster tries to keep it in play, and he does. Brock Miller comes away with a great job by Wooster. Kids out there, follow your shot. Kata wants to drive, puts his elbow down, and what do we got? Foul is another one against the Yotes. Against Galloway, 7-5 is our score. Utah State leads by two. So that's uh, two fouls on the player. Galloway picking up two fouls on five points. That's too bad. He's got all five of their points and all two of their fouls. Inbound to Bearstow. Lines up the three, no good. Tipped around and controlled by the Yotes of College of Idaho. Wadsworth on the right wing to O'Neill, back to Wadsworth. Ricardo time, swings it over to Wadsworth, takes the three, misses it, and Bean is able to keep it in play. Stole away from a Yoke player, over to Brock. Brock pump fakes the three, then gets it to Kata. Kata hands to Bearstow, Bearstow will line another three, no good. Bearstow just can't find the range from three. Wadsworth comes away with it for the College of Idaho. Aggies lead 7-5, 16-22 left to go here in the first half. De Saulnier works it over to O'Neill, puts the left-hand jumper up, won't go on the floater, and Kata pulls down a rebound. Over to Bearstow, Bearstow to Kata. Kata outside the three-point line. Tried to feed it to Wooster, instead kicks it back to Brock. Brock to Wooster, down low to Bearstow. Good positioning, underhand layup, up and in, and he's fouled. Well, the three ball's not gonna fall. Attack the rim, draw the foul, and get the end one. You'll get the three the old-fashioned way. 15.58 left to go here in the first half. Aggies lead 9-5, to five, and a free throw coming up on the Aggie Sports Network from Learfield IMG College. 15.58 left to go here in the first half, and the Aggies leading 9-5, to five, and Sean Bearstow is going to go to the line for an N1 opportunity here, Coach. Yeah, what a great drive. What's, you know, what do we say when the offense is, uh, is not doing well? We always say the ball is sticking, and it is absolutely not <laughs> sticking today. Um, Really, really uh, excited about the flow of the offense. Now, we'll get some subs in here at the at the break and, and see if we can continue with that um, smooth operation down there. And I tell you what, we did miss a few threes. We went one, we go one for four. Um, and, and Sean found, missed, missed one. He did what you should do. Get yourself to the free throw line, get everything corrected, then, then give yourself another shot for three. Anderson's going to step up the line for a free throw opportunity. Try to make it a five point lead. Bearstow knocks down the free throw, and the Aggies lead by five. Into the game, Johnny Radford, number five, running the point for the College of Idaho. Also into the game, Charles Elzey as they run a good 12-13 man rotation, at least the first two games. Long three from the left wing is up and good. Ricardo Time knocks it down. And with that, the lead is back to two. 10 to eight, 15-35 left to go here in the first half. Trevin Dorius into the game. Wooster hands over to Bearstow. Bearstow comes around to Dorius' screen. Kicks it over to Alfonso Anderson. Pump fakes the three, but they're gonna call Stepping a foul. Out Stepped out of, out, of Stepped yep. out of bounds, yep. Yeah. Good movement there by the Aggies though. That ball's moving and Again, we see three three substitutions, two su yep, three substitutions on the floor, and we're still in great flow. Radford swings it over to Paul Wilson into the game for the Yotes. He sets a screen for Radford. Work it back over to Elzy. Elzy on the right wing, still waiting. Radford now with the ball outside the three-point line. Ten seconds on the shot clock as Radford launches a long three. Dorius can't come down with a rebound. Elzy comes away with it, kicks it over to time for three, and that will go. Well, Elzy keeps it in play. Nice bounce pass, but it's deflected away, and here comes Utah State. Two on one, fast break. Wooster will double clutch and lay it up and in. How about that? That was a great move. You know, he got fouled again. I feel like uh, 
He'll get those calls. True freshman doesn't get them. Maybe a little bit later he'll get them. By the way, Stephen Ashworth in the game for Utah State. Down low is Wilson trying to go to work against Dorius. Here comes the double team. Passes out of it. Long three straight away is up and good. And right now, Tyler Robinett hits the three, and it's a one-point game, 12 to 11. Yeah. And you see this in the early stages of these kind of games. Sure, they're losing free, nothing to lose right now. Wooster to Anderson. Anderson trying to go to work on the blow, low block. Bounce pass down low to Dorius, can't handle it, but then finally collects. Spins, right hand hook shot, misses. And here comes the Yotes with the ball and a chance to take the lead. Long pass, down low, tipped away by Ashworth, out of bounds. Good job by Ashworth tracking and disrupting a potential fast break opportunity. The, um, the Yokes right now really exploiting um, the Aggies double team in the post. We just need a little bit more rotation, get a little used to your positioning in that pack and close out to your defender. 26 seconds left on the shot clock, 14.01 left to go here in the first half. Johnny Radford will inbound. Gets it to DeSonye. Tries to spin against Dorius. Did he travel? Yes. Got to imagine, you got to call that. Well, yeah, I mean, he, he did on the play before, but got to take his mask off. That's probably the problem. <laughs> 12, 12 to 11 is our score. Utah State leads by one. Largest lead has been five. Steve, Stephen Ashworth running the point for the Aggies. Swings it to Anderson to Wooster. Wooster drives, then steps back. Back to Ashworth. Ashworth to Brock. Brock Miller drives baseline. Floater with the right hand, no good. But look at Dorius skying and tipping it in for his first bucket of the night. Dorius has been active on a few plays defensively and offensively. Radford swings it to O'Neill. O'Neill to time, driving cut off and a foul. Oh. It's going to go against Utah State. Ashworth picks up his first, second team foul for Utah State. Aggies lead by three, 14 to 11, with 13.30 left to go here in the first half. Yeah, he'll get used to those calls. That's a little freedom of movement call that uh, happens in the early stages of the season. Wadsworth, long inbound to Robinette. Works it to O'Neill. O'Neill on the right wing. Charles Elsey with the ball. Back to Robinette. Pump fakes the three, then drives, swings it out top right wing, and he traveled with it. That is Jake O'Neill picking up the feet before he started running. That's a little, that's a... My man Vern ain't missing that one right in front of him, but uh, a little excited there, you know, happy feet. Vern Harris, lead official for tonight's game. The veteran of many Final Fours. Ashworth to Brock, Brock to Alfonso Anderson. Gets a good lane, but then cut off nicely. Puts the right hand shot off the glass and gets it to go. This could be a good game for him to develop a little bit of confidence too. Yeah, you know, you start seeing that ball go through the hoop and, and your whole world changes. Aggies match their largest lead of five. LZ on the left wing, cut off, hands it over to Wadsworth, cranks the three off the back iron, tipped around, controlled by Brock Miller. Brock Miller brings it quickly down the court to Ashworth. Ashworth down low to Dorius. Dorius has got a bucket on a putback spins. Nice spin move, but can't finish at the on the uh, shot. And the ball quickly goes back to the College of Idaho. LZ guarded by Wooster. Drives. Wooster's there to cut him off. Swings it over to DeSanye. Over to Robinette. To Wadsworth. Wadsworth drives. 15 seconds on the shot clock. O'Neill now on the right wing. Aggies great defensively on this possession. Wadsworth finally cut off, and Dorius blocks his shot at the rim, swings over to Robinette, Robinette hits the three. You do everything right defensively, a block shot, but unfortunately the ball gets out to a three-point shooter and he knocks it down. Yeah, just no fear there, right? That's uh, unlucky. 16-14, can't really blame the Aggies for anything defensively. Brock Miller takes the three, misses it, and Elsie comes away with it, contested rebound with Wooster. And once again, the Yotes not going away. Down by two, have a chance to tie or take the lead on this possession. Robinette, who just hit a three, Anderson guards him. Hands it over to DeSonye, goes out of bounds. He can't control it, goes out of bounds, and it'll go back to Utah State. 16-14 is our score. Aggies lead by two. You're listening to Aggie Basketball from Learfield IMG College. The Aggies 16-14, 11.35 left to go here in the first half. This is the point of the game where you're going to want to see the Aggies go on a run and push this to a pretty good-sized double-digit lead here before halftime, right? Uh, I think that each uh, each time we've broken the huddle, but, um, you know, the College of Idaho 
really, really feeling good right now and able to move the ball. Just didn't need to lock them down a little bit more defensively. I really like that we've guarded the drive. Um, yeah, I think this is a good opportunity now. A couple missed shots, you know, the, uh, the Yotes going to be a little tired here. Good chance for Aggies with their starters back in the game. Uh, minus, uh, let's see, minus our point guard. So yeah, booster's out booster's here. Out. So great time to make a run. You got your starting lineup minus Wooster, Stephen Ashworth. Lone Peak High Star brings the ball down the court, crosses the timeline. Over to Barristow, Barristow to Bean. Bean back to, down to Kata. Kata puts his shoulder down, up, under, lay it up and in. Yeah, Paul Wilson's got his work cut out for him tonight against Kata. Kata made that look easy. Yeah, I mean, he's got a collapsed chest now. He might need to go get that inflated. <laughs> 18 to 14, Aggies lead by four. Largest lead has been five. Derek Wadsworth on the left wing, up top to Wilson. Wilson then to Galloway, who's playing with two fouls. You gotta, if you're the College of Idaho, you got to feel pretty good that you've been able to keep this to a pretty minimal lead. Long three straight away is no good, and Kata pulls down the board with your best score out on the court, or off the court. Ashworth to Kata, Kata back to Bean. Bean circles back up top. Can't find anything, so then entry pass goes down low to Kata. Kata wants to go to work once again against Wilson. And they're going to call a foul against Wilson. Yeah, he's, he's um, you know, they need to bring some sort of help. Or Kata, he's got no chance to guard Kata one-on-one. -on -one. I like Kata right there, taking yeah. his time a little bit, probing. And, uh, you know, there's no double team coming, so he's free to make his moves and go for go for 30. I mean, Wilson's listed as a seven-footer. It doesn't really look like it. Brock Miller thinks about a three, instead drives, puts the oh. floater way off the glass, won't go. Ashworth tries to track it down, and he can't. Goes out of bounds. Brock had really developed that floater later in the year, last year, and uh, it seems like it's kind of gotten away from him a bit. Such a, it's such a touch and, you know, kind of a feel shot that, you know, it'll, it'll come back and get around, no doubt about it. Galloway works it to O'Neill, trying to get it to Wilson. Instead, back up top, long jumper missed, and Bean tracks down the rebound. Hands over to Ashworth, quickly down to... Barstow, Barstow attacks the rim, won't go. Wanted the foul, he didn't get it. And Wilson comes away with the rebound. Aggies waste a fast break opportunity. Ricardo time, cut off. Swings it to O'Neill on the right wing. 10 minutes exactly left to go here in the first half. Long three by Galloway, missed. Nice rebound pulled down by O'Neill on the offensive side. Wadsworth drives, pulls up, takes the jumper, misses it. And Kate is not going to let that rebound get away from him. Quickly to Bean. Bean on the right wing. Up top to Kata. Over to Ashworth. Takes the three and buries the three. 21-14. Aggies up by a touchdown. 9.35 left to go here in the first half. Yeah, we got a little ball reversal there in transition, and, and the young man knocks it down. Ashworth might be in the early stages one of your best shooter on this team. Uh, Percentage-wise, I, I would think so at yep. this point. O'Neill. Oh, Kicks it to time, ball stolen away. Bear still, three on one, fast break to Bean. And Bean will miss at the rim, but they'll call a foul. Bean's not going to miss that dunk very often no, as he was undercut. Not undercut, yeah, exactly. That's, just, that's a scary feeling that I have yeah. never had. So. Yeah. You have to get, you know, <laughs> yeah. I'm with you. You have to get pretty high to get undercut. you got to levitate almost. Yeah. Yeah. And Bean kind of... I don't want to say a little woozy, but you can kind of say like, Ooh, I may have gotten away from one a little, or gotten, a, gotten away from a scary injury there. Yeah, you can go up and under on that pretty easy, but. Bean's free throw is up and good. He'll have one more. Wooster's going to check in. And about a, looks like a hockey line change coming in for the Yotes. So they're going to go Ash, uh, Ashworth and Wooster out on the court at the same time with Bean, Bearstow, and Kata. Interesting lineup. I'm curious to see how these guys work together. This might be a lineup you see throughout the season. And just like that, Anderson checks in for Bean. Never mind. It's good to see the two of them out there together and see if they can get some continuity. Radford back into the game, running the point. Ashworth is right on him. Over to DeSanye on the left wing. Back over to Radford. Radford on the left wing. Radford pounding the dribble. Finally gets it to Galloway. Galloway back to Radford. Takes the three. Yes. Knocks it down. Johnny Radford hits the three. And the lead is 6-23-17. Down low to Kata. Kata 
Spins. Kata attacks the rim and can't finish with the left hand at the rim. Had it right there. Just wouldn't go for him. For him. Galloway with a rebound. And Galloway on the left wing. Driving on Anderson. Puts his shoulder down and they're going to call a foul. Bear still with a reach in. Actually, it's going to be on Anderson with the block. 23-17, six-point lead for Utah State. 8.31 left to go here in the first half. Yeah, they were uh, defending the ball so well, and it looks like we've had a, given up a few freedom of movement fouls. Galloway attacks against Anderson, puts the jumper up and hits it right over the top of him. Five-point lead, or five-point run for the Yotes. has cut the Aggie lead to four, 23-19. Wooster up top to Bearstow. Bearstow hands to Anderson. Anderson will rise and fire from three and miss it. But Kata is right there to collect, and Kata lays it up and in. Give Anderson the assist on that one, right? <laughs> That's right. He just passed all day. <laughs> that snaps the 5-0 run by the Yotes. 25-19, six-point lead for Utah State. Galloway attacks the baseline. His baseline pass, though, stolen away. Bearstow comes away with it. Another turnover. Wooster lost the handle. Fortunately, though, Ashworth is there to collect. Back to Wooster, back to Ashworth. Ashworth comes around to Kata Screen. Tied up in the lane, back to Wooster. Wooster gets a Kata Screen, attacks, has an easy layup opportunity, and can't finish. Another layup missed by the Aggies. LZ quickly coming down the court. Aggies have numbers. LZ pulls it back. Back to Radford. Radford comes back to U-State logo to reset the offense. Aggies lead by six, 25-19, with 7.20 left to go here in the first half. We'll have a dead ball in the next timeout, or in the next, or we'll have a timeout in the next dead ball. There we go. LZ to time. Time back to LZ. LZ gets into lane, attacks, shoots over the top of Kata, and nestles at home. 25-21. Not trouble guarding the ball tonight. Timeout on the court. Utah State wants to talk about it. 6.58 left to go. This is a coach's timeout. It's a quick one. You're listening to Aggie Basketball from Learfield IMG College. Lance Beckert and Coach, kind of a back and forth game, and uh, the Aggies unable to really pull away from this squad. Uh, you know, I mean, um, the Yotes have a couple guys, and, and Galloway's a premier player on their team, at least at that level. Um, you'll, you'll win a lot of games with um, with when he when he's on the floor. Um, giving a little bit of, of fits to the, uh, to the Aggies. Um, yeah, a couple things going under ball screens has kind of hurt us a little bit because we're a little bit late on a counter when they drive to the hoop and um, you know, a little bit slow on rotations to help and uh, committed some fouls on, on rotations, which shouldn't happen. So, yeah, just need to sharpen up a little bit on, on, on defense. Kind of, uh, you know, we are limiting the one shot there for, you know, two or three minutes, but then not scoring on our yeah. end. So it's just a fine balance, and, and we'll get it figured out. Gab Wireless is a kid-focused wireless company providing a completely safe experience with no parental controls needed. Keep your kids safe and reduce screen time with Gab Wireless. Use the code Aggie15 to receive a $15 discount. Live beyond the screen. All right, 6.58 left to go here in the first half, and the Aggies lead by four, 25-21, over the pesky Yotes of the College of Idaho. Aggies have Ashworth, Bearstow, Wooster, Kata, and Anderson out on the court. Anderson inbounds to Ashworth. Aggies moving left to right. Over to Bearstow, back to Ashworth. Ashworth to Kata. Kata on the low wing. Kata spins. Kata gets underneath the bucket. Kata puts a shot up, and he travels with it. Would have got the bucket, but instead they're going to hit him with the travel. Aggies going to bring a little press here, try to force the action a little bit. Radford nearly lost the handle. He does. Bearstow. Booster gets hit hard underneath the rim, and he'll get a couple free throws as he gets the steal, and we'll get the free throws. Number five, Johnny Radford. Timeout on the court. We'll take it as well. 25-21, Aggies lead by four. 6.39 left to go. You're listening to Aggie Basketball from Learfield IMG College. One six-point lead, 6.39 left to go. Anderson's going to check out. Bean is going to check in. So here's that lineup you wanted to see. Aggies again showing pressure. They got a turnover on the last opportunity when they ran pressure. Wadsworth still running the ball. Wooster picks him up in midcourt. Finally crosses the timeline with 21 seconds left on the shot clock. Comes around a screen. Kicks it to LZ. LZ on the left wing. Tries to drive on Bearstow. Bearstow cuts him off. Back over to Radford. 
Radford on the right, 10 seconds on the shot clock. Elsie pump fakes the three, gets into the lane, takes the floater and hits it home. Charles Elsie knocks down the bucket. 27-23, four point lead for the Aggies. Wooster to Kata, Kata to Anderson, or excuse me, Bearstow. Bearstow drives, has the ball knocked out of his hands, out of bounds. It'll stay with Utah State. I mean, you run the press, you, you give them 21 seconds and then, you know, guard, guard them for another 18 and, and give up a little runner into the layup. So we've got to firm up defensively, that's for sure. Jake O'Neill comes in for Radford. Ashworth gets it to Bean. Bean is fouled on the jumper and he'll have himself a couple of free throws. And this is where you can really exert your will on a team like this. Yeah, just to the basket, to the basket, put the onus on the referee. Yeah. Um, you know, we have such an athletic advantage. I like getting Justin Bean to the free throw line too, get his, uh, get his shot right, but he needs to continue to attack offensively. Free throw number one for Bean is good. One more coming up. Twenty-eight, twenty-three, five-point lead for the Aggies with six minutes left to go here in the first half. Bean's second free throw. That is up, and that is good as well. And it's back to a seven-point lead. Inbound to LZ. LZ double team. Finally gets it to Wadsworth. He crosses the timeline, and the Aggies get back defensively as as a, a Yotes set up their offense. Wadsworth gets a screen, looking for somebody. Guarded nicely by Ashworth. Finally swings it to Wilson on the right blow block. Wilson kicks it to O'Neill. O'Neill's baseline pass stolen away. It's the second one of those. Beans come away with quickly to Bearstow. Bearstow forcing the action to Wooster. Wooster down low to Kata. Kata working against Wilson. Up, under, shot, off the glass. No good again. Tipped out of bounds. It'll stay with Utah State. Coach, there's just something on that rim there for Kata. He just can't yeah. get those easy shots to fall. They will. He's, he's really frustrated and then you know, you put a little bit more oomph into it. He'll be fine, just needs to relax. Wooster to Bearstow, Bearstow to Ashworth. Ashworth will take the baseline jumper and knock it home. And the Aggies with their, well, they've led by nine. Largest, or eight is the lead right now, 31-23. 5-13 left to go here in the first half. You want to see a run here. Elzy on the right wing. Bearstow trying to lock him down. Bounce pass on the baseline. Works it back to Elzy. Elzy on the left wing. Takes a long step back three, no good. Rebound, Wooster skies ahead of O'Neill to take it down to Ashworth. Ashworth back to Bearstow. He'll attack, cut off, has his shot blocked away and kept in play and finally goes out of bounds. Who's it going to go with you? To the Yotes and Bean gets up smiling saying, you serious? Might overturn that, Vern. Yep. Yep, Vern comes in. Vern Harris, veteran referee, comes in and says, nah, -uh. I think that's going to stay with Utah State. Well, of course, last, last game we had a few of those go the opposite way, so I kind of wonder how life uh, evens up there. But 31-23, eight-point lead for Utah State. 4.50 left to go. Ashworth trying to get it to Wooster. He does. Wooster with the ball on the right wing, setting up the offense. 15 seconds left on the shot clock to Bearstow. Bearstow up top to Dorius, who just checked into the game. Back to Wooster. Wooster drives, attacks, cut off, and he'll travel with it. Yep, good call. Wooster slid the foot, and the Aggies give it back. 31-23, eight-point lead with 4.36 left to go here in the first half. Yeah, very impressed with the two young players. Just not, not, not a lot of fear. They're ready to attack, aren't they? Certainly are, yeah. There's, I mean, no, there's no fear at all in those no, two. No, Ashworth or Wooster. Galloway. To Desaigne, back to Radford. Radford hounding the dribble near the mid-stripe logo. 13 seconds on the shot clock, tries to get around Dorius, takes the floater, won't go, and finally Bean comes away with it. Kicks it over to Ashworth, long pass to Dorius. Dorius throws down the two-handed dunk, and what a pass from Ashworth to Dorius as he throws down the two-handed stuffer. Got to reward a postman who will run Woo. rim to rim. Now the Aggies have their largest lead of 10, and Ashworth is just harassing everybody in the backcourt. He's filling it. Radford with the ball outside their right wing as the Yotes had needed about 15 seconds to set up their offense. Radford, now 10 seconds. Down low to Galloway. Mismatch there as he's got, has to pass out of it. Long three-point shot, missed, and Wooster tries to track it down. O'Neal 
gets it, but they're going to get Wooster with a foul against O'Neill as he kind of came underneath Wooster, and Wooster fell on the top of him. Yeah, that's a three-point takedown right there. <laughs> Timeout on the court, 33-23. Aggies lead by 10 as we near the end of the first half on the Aggie Sports Network right. from Learfield IMG College. For Utah State, 33-23 against NAIA College of Idaho. 338 left to go here in the first half. Utah State Athletics and America First Credit Union have been featuring the academic uh, success of student athletes on various social media channels. This week, the athletes include Bailey Brinkerhoff, a psychology major with a 3.7 GPA. Ali Bybee, a marketing major with a 3.7 GPA. Uh, Made Hess, an elementary education major with a 396 a a average. Reagan Hoops, a computer science major with a 4.0 GPA, just like Coach used to rock it. And then Abby Jensen, a management information system, also with a 4.0. Congratulations to all of those uh, student athletes and their academic success. Scotty, I think you're mistaken. Point. 04. 0.04. Yeah, that's what I used to blow. When 0. 0. 0.0. All right, O'Neill will inbound. Aggies up by 10, 33, 23. Galloway will take the jumper from inside, and a foul is going to be called. And I think that's the bean to go down to the other side. Are we in the bonus yet? We should be shooting free throws. Doesn't look like quite yet. Nope, there he goes. Bean's like, oh, going to shoot some free throws here. At the free throw line for the that is the Justin eighth Bean. team foul. Bean's going to be shooting the one and one. And Bean with Dorius, Wooster, Bearstow, and Anderson. Bean. Those are your five Aggies out on the court. Tries to extend this double digit lead, and he does. It's now 11 34 23. Here comes the second free throw for Bean. Coach Pete get his sub in here so we can set our defense. Again, a little press probably. Second free throw is good. That allows Stephen Ashworth to come in the game. And Wooster is going to check out. Yeah, just to be in the front of that press is so long and athletic. Desaunye with the ball. Finally crossing the timeline. Big Mamma Jamba, that guy. Hands over to Ashworth. Ashworth to Galloway. Galloway on the left wing. Swings it back up top to Radford. And Radford. Oh, no. I'm cheering for the other team. That's his oh, that's best player. Galloway gets hit, oh. and Galloway steps his out. Third. That's his third foul. And that was away from the action, too. Yeah, he just um, he kind of he rolled out poor little Stephen Ashworth right there. But, um, yeah, that's too bad. Ashworth's going to take that contact, and he's going to welcome it. Yeah, and that's a great he's play. Just trying to get under the, game, and he's <laughs> going to try to get under the skin of everybody out there. Anderson yeah, trying to good. post up against O'Neill. Up, under, puts the shot up and got it to go. Great job. That's the guy using incredible There's amount. The... And you got a really upset Colby Blaine up against Vern Harris. And Vern's going to say, hey, you're from the NAIA. I'm not going to put up with that nonsense. No T might... yet. Yeah, oh, yeah, he got one. Oh, did he get a oh, T? Yeah. Okay. That will, hey, now, my man's not taking a long time. To, <laughs> That's why I was thinking. Yeah. I'm like, he's, but he's, uh, but uh, Harris is still out there jabbing a little bit. I think he was giving him the business right there. So We'll go ahead and keep it here. 37-23, 14-point lead for the Aggies as the technical uh, will be assessed as the Aggies have a chance. And we talk about this, kind of pulling away, pulling away down the stretch here in the first half. Yeah, and I, I will tell you, that's a coach that's, that's won some games for a reason. And, uh, you know, his team's kind of slumping a little bit here and their best player now sitting on the bench. And um, there was some purpose behind that, I'm sure. And, and he may have saw something he didn't like and feel like he's getting a little homered here. And, and yeah. Uh, yeah, there's a reason he's won 40 games and only lost, uh, what, a handful. 63 and 10. 63 and 10. See, that's, that's twice as good as I that's thought. That's two moral numbers right there. Easy now. That's blasphemy, brother. <laughs> Just saying, there's a, it's a high level of wins. <laughs> that is a high percentage. Isanye with the ball in the midcourt stripe. Works the ball down, looking for LZ. Finally is able to hand off to him. 18 seconds on the shot clock. Gets it to Isanye. Work it over to time. Ricardo time. Cut off. Back to LZ. LZ comes around a big screen. Launches the three. Knocks it down. Three point basket. Five. Big three. LZ. To Bearstow. Bearstow quickly down the court. Aggies don't have numbers, so Bearstow slows it down. Hands to Bean. Wow. Bean with a left-handed spinning layup and lays it up and in. 
39-26, 13-point lead for the Aggies. Elsey quickly down the court, rises from the free throw line and knocks it down, and he's feeling it right now. He said, that's for you, coach. Anderson in trouble, gets it to Ashworth. Ashworth lays the alley-oop to Bearstow. Bearstow lays it up and in. Ashworth spun around the defender, passed it up. That's the second beautiful pass tonight thrown by Ashworth that's yeah. led to a, a couple of layups for the Aggies. Yeah, he's really getting in the flow of the offense now. 41-28, Aggies by 13. LZ has been heating up a little bit, coming around a screen, cut off, swings it back to Robinette. Robinette, he's got an early three in this game to O'Neal on the right wing. Back to Robinette, five seconds on the shot clock to LZ. LZ's gonna take that jumper, Bearstow's right in his face, and he still knocks it down. Over the top of Bearstow, who got a beautiful hand in his face. Bearstow pump fakes the three, instead drives, puts a shot up to Dorius, who lays it up and in. 43-31, Aggies exchanging three for twos, but still lead by 12 with 117 and counting left to go here in the first half. Yeah, Dorius a little surprised by the alley-oop. I, I think he wanted to have that again. He had dunked that. Yeah. LZ kind of filling it, works it to Robinette, then back to Time. Time on the left wing. Over to O'Neal. O'Neal to LZ, and Bean's going to come out and guard him. Comes around the screen, passes down low, and Bean's there to steal it away. Quickly to Ashworth. Ashworth drives. Ashworth attacks the rim, and he's fouled, and he'll go to the line. Steven Ashworth has just been great tonight. Yeah, he's uh, he's feeling confident. and uh, yes, the, the, the couple passes, right, that's what really yep. got him going as the assist. And then, of course, he made that first three-pointer of the game. Five points, three assists for Steven Ashworth. He's a true freshman right off a mission. Shooting two. Couple free throws coming up. 43-31, 48 seconds left to go. Ashworth, first free throw, missed it. Uh, that was a bit right, I think. Uh, just a bit outside. Uh, Scotty had to take it back. Apparently there wasn't a technical foul called. Yep. Must have uh, led into a timeout, and Vern just um, educated. Uh, that's what I'm saying. Vern took yeah, it. I'm he educated. surprised. Well, he took a Nolan Ryan fastball from Stu Morrill once, too, and caught it, so that was <laughs> – <laughs> and did not give a technical foul, so. Ashworth makes the second free throw. Trying to harass Elzey in the backcourt. Still handling the ball. Caught up, bounce pass, nearly stolen away, but Wadsworth has it, back to Elzey. Aggies lead by 13, 44-31, 35 seconds left to go here in the first half. Time, coming around a screen, gets into the lane. Pulls up, takes the jumper, knocks it down. That mid, those mid-range shots are really falling for these guys tonight. Yeah, he and he's his, he's kind of been a wrecking crew. Though. I mean, the two of them together, it's not falling for him outside. Yep. They just uh, hit the mid-range. Aggies can hold for the last shot, leading by 11. Bean to Ashworth. Ashworth on the right wing, down low to Dory, or excuse me, uh, Shimon Zapala, and he can't finish. And here comes. The Yotes looking for the last shot. Long three is missed, and that's how it ends. So the Aggies will take an 11-point lead in the break, 44-33, as that brings us to halftime. Utah State leading the College of Idaho. Aggie basketball from Learfield IMG College will kick off our halftime show next. You're listening to Utah State basketball. Aggies up by 11, 44-33 from Learfield IMG College. Aggies by 11, 44-33, and we're ready to start the second half. Aggies bring their starters back out on the court. Sean Bairstow coming in to get the start in place of Marco Anthony, who was out for tonight's ballgame. Saw a little bit of uh, Shimon Zapala, number 12. It's only seen uh, moments in a couple games. Uh, Utah State. Coaches really like his potential, too. I think he has a chance to be really good. Still young, still very raw, and it'll be interesting to see how he develops and if he gets any more time here in the coming games. Yeah, really good size. He looked like he had a little uh, little skill package. Yep, 6'11", um, 240 warm. pounds. Yeah. So the Yotes get the ball on alternating possession to start the second half. O'Neal working out top the center circle. Hands over to Time. Time comes around to Curl, then kicks it back to Wadsworth. Wadsworth outside the right wing. Looks to drive, and we're going to have a foul. What do we got? The Shot clock's, clock's the stuck clock's at 20. Yeah. Gotta... Well, both clocks are stuck. 
Interesting, the uh, Yotes coming out of uh, out of their locker room trying to exploit a mismatch with Wooster, who I think is um, so far very underrated. We haven't talked about his defense. Yeah. I think I've seen some pretty good things. You know, again, it's really, really early, but interesting they'd want to – not really a mismatch there. No. <laughs> but uh, that's the – that's the matchup they were looking for. So the officials, usually you and I, and you always do a really good job because pre-COVID, we were on that far sideline and we could hear what the coaches were saying or what the officials were saying to the uh, timekeepers on that far side. But unfortunately, because of COVID, we're now on the <laughs> other side of the court. So we, you were always good in kind of eavesdropping on what was going on and what the conversations were. Yeah, this one, there is a stopwatch on the bottom of uh – um, in DV Sports, the program we use, uh, mo most, most teams now use to, uh, to, to do their reviews. And on the bottom of that, there's a stopwatch. And so it's easy, it's easy for them to um, get the correct number of, yep. uh, excuse me, the correct time on the clock. So we're going to shave about nine seconds off both clocks. It'll go to 1940 and 11 seconds left on the shot clock. So that means it took nine seconds for someone in this building to figure out the clock wasn't running. Nine <laughs> seconds. O'Neill is going to inbound here on that near sideline. Finally gets it up top to time. Wooster comes out to meet him. Eight seconds on the shot clock. Six, five. Time still with the ball. Three, two. Gets the shot ah. up and draws the foul and gets the end one. Time drives, gets to the baseline, pushes it up and in, and gets the end one. Yeah, you know, Brock did a great job of, of, uh, of guarding him. He, he kind of just grinded and grinded and grinded in there at the end. Looks like his right arm hooked him just a little bit and created that contact and one foul. So time's going to step up to the free throw line. They give him the bucket, and he knocks down the free throw, and it's a eight-point game, 44-36. Wooster moving right to left. Gets a double screen, gets into the lane, attacks, right-hand layup, can't finish, and Bean tries to keep it alive, but Wadsworth comes away with it. Here comes the Yotes, quickly to time. Time launches the three, and he buries the three. A 6-0 run by Ricardo Time, and it's a five-point game. Yeah, that's really like a one-man show out there right now. Wooster on the left wing to uh, Bearstow, Bearstow to Keita. Keita trying to go to work, has all the positioning, and they're going to hit him with a travel. And again, th same thing. Desaunier, just no match. Kate is anticipating a more of a challenge there, and he just kind of <laughs> under, kind of just lets him have all the movement he needs, and he walks with it. Yeah, it just ends up on, too far underneath the hoop. So the Aggies were hoping to pull away. Instead, it's the Yotes going the other way. Pass deflected out of bounds. We'll stay with the College of Idaho. 44-39 is our score. 18.51 left to go here in the game. Definitely character-building opportunity for the Aggies. And you know, this is a team also that the more they, they let them stick around, the more confidence they're going to have. Yeah, free and easy. O'Neill on the right wing. Over to Galloway. Galloway to Wadsworth. Wadsworth on the left. Finally gets it to time. Time, he's been on fire. Rises from inside the three-point line. Leaves it short. Kata pulls down the rebound. Quickly gets it to Brock Miller. Brock. Over to Wooster. Wooster baseline drive. Has the ball knocked out of his hands. Desaunier comes away with it. Another turnover. And here comes the Yotes trying to cut into the Aggie five-point lead. Galloway with Wooster on him to Wadsworth. Wadsworth back to Galloway. Has a bit of an advantage against Wooster. So he wants to go to work on him. Kicks it back to Desaunier over to Wadsworth. Wadsworth on the left wing. Back to Galloway. Galloway, 10 seconds on the shot clock. Takes a step back, takes the long shot. It's a two, and it's tipped up. Wadsworth has it. Bean had the ball deflected off his hands. One of those bad misses that just goes off the rim in a poor way. Offensive rebound, Idaho. Wadsworth to Galloway, has a good look straight away. Three, yes, knocks it down, and that's a 9-0 run by the College of Idaho. And it's a 44-32 game. Two-point lead by Utah State, and the Aggies need a timeout. 17-38 left to go here in the ball game. College of Idaho hanging in there with Utah State. You're listening to Aggie basketball. This is a coach's timeout on the Aggie Sports Network from Learfield IMG College. Score, 17-38 left to go here in the second half. And well, a lot of Aggie fans looking around here going, what's going on? It's a, if you go back to the end of the uh, first half, it's actually an 11-0 run by the College of Idaho. Aggies at one point led by 13 and now only lead by two. Yeah, just, uh, you know, coming out of halftime, really just a lack of, of concentration and focus and, 
um, yeah, not not really excusable. Um, so, like like I said, it's a, it's a great time for the Aggies to show a little uh, um, guts right now and, and um, kind of knock them out a little bit here coming out. And you're gonna have to fight back. Now you're gonna have a game because, like you said earlier, you, you've cr you've created a monster and giving them confidence. There's really nothing nothing for them to lose. So they're they're free and easy, and you've got to find a way to to create some pressure. I'd really like to see us get back to extended defense a little bit or or um, little half court traps or or something just to to kind of try to increase the pace of this game. So 44-42 is our score. Utah State leads, but only by two here on the Aggie Sports Network from Learfield IMG College. Hey, remember the next Aggie Coaches Show featuring uh, interim coach Frank Miley and Craig Smith will be tomorrow at Old Chicago, located just down the street from Maverick Stadium. That'll be tomorrow night at 6 o'clock right here on the Aggie Sports Network from Learfield IMG College. Aggies, break the huddle. Looks like Stephen Ashworth coming into the game with Justin Bean, Brock Miller, Raleigh Wooster, and Amish Kata are going to be your five Aggies out on the court. Uh, yeah, Ashworth, I like that sub. I, I think right now he gives you a lot of energy. He's, um, you know, kind of really harassing defensively, and, you know, the ball carrier, and and uh, obviously, uh, offensively he's giving you a lot of support here in the first half. Yeah. So Bean inbounds to Ashworth. Ashworth with six first half points as well as three assists. Bean to Ashworth. Ashworth has Wadsworth on him. Gets it to Brock Miller over to Raleigh Wooster. Wooster comes around to Kata's screen, rises, takes the shot, and can't get it to go. Tipped around and controlled by the Yotes. Number 25, Paul Wilson comes away with it. And Wadsworth with the ball, and the Yotes have a chance to tie or take the lead here. Currently on a 9-0 second half run. 11-0 if you go back to the second half. Long three is up and good. Holy smokes, Galloway buries the three, and now that young man is filling it. And the Yotes lead by one, 45-44. I'd like to see a K to touch one of these possessions here. Bean drives against Galloway, up under, floater with the right hand, missed it. Galloway comes away with it. And now you can tell Utah State's getting a little tight. Yeah, not a bad shot there, just, uh, yeah, again, you're right, exactly. Galloway to Wadsworth, got to keep an eye on Galloway. Elsie's into the game, he had a big first half as well. LZ outside the three-point line, comes around a screen. Gets into the lane, tied up nicely. Looking for somebody to clear, finally gets it to Wadsworth, and the ball ripped out of his hands by Wooster. Wooster behind the back dribble, looking for Ashworth. Ashworth cross-court to Bean. Bean will drive, Bean attacks, puts the shot up in, yes, and he's fouled. There you go. That snaps an 11-0 run, 12-0 run, I guess I should say, by the College of Idaho. And it'll send Bean to the free throw line. Yeah, that's exactly what we like to see. A, a de, you know, transition off of, off of good defense. Worcester, again, great hands with his takeaway. Nice little transition drive by Bean. Bean going to the free throw line. And he is now 7 for 7 from the free throw line tonight. And the Aggies back up by 2, 47-45. That's efficient. That is. Brock Miller's going to check out. Here's the press that you wanted. Ashworth harassing Wadsworth. Swings it over to Galloway. Galloway back to Wadsworth. Aggies lead by two, 47-45 against a pesky team from the College of Idaho. Namiya Kata comes away at the steal. Kata running it by himself. Throws down the two-handed dunk. Paul Wilson wanted none of that. Kata with the steal. Kata takes it down. Kata throws it down. Aggies up by four, 49-45. Oh. Pass to Wilson. Wilson down low, puts the shot up, and he travel. Kata should have gotten a off, should have drawn an offensive foul here, as he's able to create some contact. They gave it to him on the other end of the court. Yeah, Timeout on the court. Aggies lead by four, 49-45. Sorry, coach. No, you're good. Just great effort by Kata. Kind of got it all started. Aggies lead by Aggies lead by four on the Aggie Sports Network from Learfield IMG College. 45 is our score. Utah State leads by four. 15-47 left to go. Yotes started the second half on a 12-0 run. Aggies led by 11 on the break, and the Yotes led by one, and the Aggies now currently on a 5-0 run, and I think maybe Utah State fans starting to be like, okay, righted the ship. Now it's time to pour it on, but I don't know if you're going to be able to pour it on this <laughs> team tonight. We keep saying that, but yeah, not, if we're going to, it needs to be that kind of effort. Yep. The last two minutes, um, what the Aggies showed on the floor, it, 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 I, I think we're definitely playing down to the competition, level of the competition. And they're also playing up. Yes. I mean, credit to them 
um, more than anything, but um, we've got to keep that intensity going. That's really what creates a little bit of havoc and, and uh, gets the fans behind us. That to me is Kata, still drive and dunk is our CVTD drive of the game. Connect with the people and the places that matter most. Ball on a long pass, tipped out of bounds, and the ball will go back to the Oats. Thought he was going to do one of these. Yeah. 49-45. <laughs> Inbound to time. Time swings it over to DeSanye. Works it down the court, over to Elzy. Elzy back up top to Johnny Radford into the game, number five. Radford. On the right wing, hoists the three, misses the three. Ashworth comes away with it. Ashworth quickly down the court. Ashworth wants to drive, takes a desperation shot, misses it, but he draws the foul. Radford's over there like, what are you talking about? Yeah. Yeah, Ashworth felt a little contact there, put the ball up, and got himself to the line. Crafty play. Yep. Smart player, and when you are probably grew up undersized, you have to learn how to be a little bit more crafty than everybody else. Yeah. Ashworth's free throw is no good. But a little tight on the line, that'll he'll loosen up. He's feeling a little pressure today, that's for sure. Ashworth has one more free throw coming up. And promptly knocks it down. He's two for four. Both trips today, one for two. Aggies lead by five. 6 0 run by the Aggies. Bringing the pressure once again. Galloway to Radford. Radford, double team, has to. Get it to Galloway, finally over the timeline to DeSanye. And he's hassled. Finally, with 14 seconds left on the shot clock, the Yotes get into their offense. Wadsworth to Galloway, launches a long straightaway three, missed it, and Bearstow comes away with it. Out of rhythm, three-point shot. Aggies will force that all day. Bearstow quickly to Anderson. Anderson thinks about driving, then kicks it over to Ashworth. He'll take the long baseline jumper, knock it down, and Stephen Ashworth is making his presence felt tonight. Nine points on the night on three of three from the field. Aggies lead by seven, 52-45. Curly on an 8-0 run. Foul's going to go against Utah State on the drive. And I believe, yep, yeah, the second team foul for Utah State in the half. Yeah, credit to Anderson. Great penetrating drive. Drew the defense, kicked it to Ashworth. Good wide open shot. Radford all the way out to Elzy on the inbound. 20 seconds on the shot clock. Elzy comes around a screen. Kicks it back over to Radford. Anderson switches out on him. Radford outside the three-point line. Tries to juke around a screen. Pulls up, hands over to DeSanye, and he's fouled as he tries to drive. And I think Ashworth took the brunt of that, even though he's going to draw the foul. Yeah, there's a there was a time there that 21 more pads this year. <laughs> I promise you that. Seven-point lead, eight seconds on the shot clock for the College of Idaho. Oh, they'll bump it up to 20 on the foul. Trying to get it into Galloway. They finally do. He's got to extend outside the three-point line to get it. Anderson's right on him. Galloway picks up his dribble, hands to Radford. Radford, as the Aggies switch, Galloway's got Ashworth on him, so he's calling for the ball. Back over to Elzy. Elzy outside the three-point line, launches the long three from the wing. No good, and Dorius says, I'll take that, thank you very much, and dishes it over to Wooster. Aggies on an 8-0 run. Wooster into lane, attacks, right-hand scoop shot. No good, but he draws another foul, and he'll go to the line, and the Aggies are saying, hey, enough of this. Let's force the action and draw some fouls. Yeah, really challenging the rim uh, in transition, which is... Uh, Led to a lot of free throws, and, and we'll take them one by one. So Wooster is going to step up to the line. He's got two free throws. He's got seven points on the night. First free throw is good. One more coming up. He's three for three on the day. Kata and Bean are going to check into the game for Dorius and Anderson, who gave good minutes for here for Utah State. Yeah, I, I thought Anderson did a great job, uh, you know, the, leading that press, really aggressive and long and athletic, and then, yeah, good penetrating drive and pass. It's a great assist to help us get, uh, get going here. Second free throw for Wooster is perfect. And the Aggies now on a 10-0 run, lead by nine. Again, the press against Radford. Ball's on the court, oh boy, and oh it boy. is kept in play by Ashworth. Over to Bearstow. Bearstow, pass to Kata, and Kata throws down the dunk. How about that ball movement? Coach, you were nervous we were going to have a player in our laps there for a second. A big one. <laughs> Quickly down the court. Aggies lead by 12. Have gotten that lead back. Galloway 
Behind the three-point line on the left wing. Aggies led by 11, gave up the lead, and now promptly on a 13-0 run. Time, working the dribble. Down to Galloway, posting up Bearstow. Passes out of it to Radford, takes the long three. Yes, hits it. That snaps the Aggies' 12-0 run. 56-48, back to an eight-point game. Ashworth, back over to Bearstow, lines up the three. Yes, Sean Bearstow buries the three, gets those three points right back. He needs to hit those. Yeah, it's a good feel right there, right? He, he looked a little more confident than he did last game. 59-48, an 11-point game. 12-47 left to go in the game. DeSanye is going to draw a foul from Kata as Kata wanted to get another steal. Got underneath him, and Kata gets hit with a foul. That's only the 13th foul for Utah State with 12.43 left to go here in the game. Paul Wilson, number one. Wooster is going to check out of the game. Aggies on the court right now. Ashworth, Anderson, Bean, Bearstow, and Kata. A large, large That lineup. is a large lineup. Yeah. Four big guys and Ashworth. <laughs> the spark plug. He's been great tonight. He sure has. Brings a lot of energy, and, and he's a player. Radford to time. Swings over to Robinette, who had a couple big threes in the first half. Back to Wadsworth. Lines it up to time. Time for three. Missed it. Kata skies for the rebound. Wasn't going to let anybody have a shot at that thing. Ashworth quickly down. Works to the baseline, then dribbles back oh out. Over to Anderson. Anderson lost the dribble. Back to Ashworth. Over to Bean. Bean draws, takes the jumper, hits it from the free throw line. 61-48. Aggies lead by 13, matching their largest lead of the game. Aggies currently on a 17-3 run over the last 450. 12 minutes left to go here in the first half. Robinette, hounded by Anderson. Trying to get it to anybody. Can't, finally gets it to Radford. Radford on the right wing, 10 seconds on the shot clock. Ashworth is on him, tries to spin, takes the jumper, and makes the jumper over the top of Ashworth. Not much he can else he can do on that one defensively. 61-50, an 11-point lead for the Aggies with 11.42 left to go here in the first half. Ashworth launches the three, is fouled on the three, and he'll have three free throws. Sean Bearstow helped uh, Radford and Bearstow, er, and Ashworth up at the same time. Double assist. Takes some strong arms there. 61-50, three free throws coming up for Stephen Ashworth on the Aggie Sports Network from Learfield IMG College. Here in the ball game, Utah State leading by 11, 61 to 50. Hey, tax reform laws impact, all, impact almost all tax returns each year. Tax is obviously confusing. H&R Block has more than 60 years of experience dealing with those taxes. Information is available at hnrblock.com. H&R Block of Logan is owned and operated by proud Aggie alumni. All right, tonight Stephen Ashworth's been really good for Utah State. He's back out on the court with Namiya Shkata, Justin Bean, Alfonso Anderson, and Sean Bearstow. I thought Anderson's been good tonight as well. Yeah, Anderson's really brought some, some energy and a lot of what we saw last year. Bean, I mean, phenomenal, right? As always, really good on, on the offensive and defensive glass, but um, just getting himself to the free throw line yeah. and, and uh, scoring points. And Ashworth, I, I, man, he's Ashworth. really shown me a lot tonight about his game. Ashworth's got three free throws. He's two for four on the night from the line. So that first free throw is good. He'll have two more. Yeah, that confidence is back now. Yeah. He brings a little swagger to this team, too. He does. He does. He's, uh, he's got a little spark plug to him. Second free throw rattles in. <laughs> kind of shakes his head. He wanted it to be as clean as the first one. They both count the same. 63-50. <laughs> And the third free throw is perfect, and the Aggies have their largest lead of the night tonight of 14, 64 to 50, 11.35 left to go here in the game. Radford swings it back up top to Robinette. Over to O'Neill. O'Neill on the left wing, trying to find somebody to clear. Finally gets it to Robinette, takes the three and misses it, and goes over the back of the backboard, out of bounds. Now at four, the Elsie's gonna check into the game for Radford. Elsie on the night has 12 points. I think all 12 of those came in the first half. I think he's scoreless here in the second. Sean Bearstow bringing the ball down the court. Up top to Kata. Kata hands to Bean. Bean circles right, then to Bearstow. Bearstow looking down for Kata. Can't get it to him. Sings it to Ashworth. Ashworth pump fakes the three. Bounce pass down to Bean. Bean has fouled hard at the rim. Backbreaker. Jeez. 
And that's Robinette who kind of chuckles to himself on the foul. Yeah, it got caught up a little awkwardly. Like, I don't, I don't think it's a dirty play. I think no. he had a hold of his arm and just kind of tried to support him, but it got caught up there a little awkward. So Bean's yeah. going to go to the line for a couple free throws. 64 to 50. Aggies lead by 14. 11 minutes left to go here in the second half. Bean's free throw is good. He'll have another. Aggies out on the court right now. Bearstow, Ashworth, Bean, who makes the second free throw. Anderson and Kata. And Bean is now nine for nine from the free throw line. Nine free throws. O'Neill on the left wing. Ball stolen away by Ashworth. Ashworth gets to the lane. Underhand scoop layup up and in. Ashworth has got 14 points on the night. Yeah, great steal anticipation. That's, again, the UNC Tar Heel play. He read that very well. 18-point lead for the Aggies, 68-50. to 50. Aggies on an overall 24-5 to 5 run. Wilson stood up by Kata, has to bounce it past that Elsie. Swings it over to Wadsworth. Wadsworth with Bearstow on him, takes the three, misses it. Tipped around, controlled by Robinette, hands over to LZ. He'll take the long three, missed that one. And this one is controlled by Bearstow and the Aggies. Quickly to Ashworth. Aggies smelling blood in the water. Kata. Swings over to Anderson. Anderson pump fakes the pass, takes the baseline jumper, missed it. Bean is there for the tip in. Justin Bean, 17 points on the night. 70 to 50, Aggies up by 20. 9.55 left to go in the game. Aggies on a 26 to five run. Elsie takes the jumper, missed it. Kata rips down the board. Says, I'll take all of that, thank you very much. Justin Bean bounced past to Bearstow. Aggies filling it, cross court to Ashworth. Launches the three, no good. Bean can't come away with it, but Kata does. Kata wants to spin, and they're gonna call Wilson with the foul. Yeah, the giveaway there, he knew he was beat. 70 to 50, Aggies up by 20, and this is what you wanted to see, what, we're, what we've got going on here, Coach. Absolutely, this is the run you want, and all starts on the defensive end with pressure and leads out to uh, some exciting baskets going the other way. We got the crowd involved and yeah, everything you wanted right here. We get a little, little time for the bench now. Into the game comes Wooster, Dorius, Bean, Anderson, and Ashworth. Those are your five Aggies on the court right now. Kata's gonna take a bit of a breather. He's earned it. He's been good tonight. Namias Kata with eight points and eight rebounds and three assists. Anderson to Ashworth. They set that up for three. Can't get it to go. Anderson nearly pulls it down, but the Yotes come away with it. Wadsworth on the left wing. Gets it to Galloway. Aggies up by 20, 70 to 50. Galloway still trying to drive, cut off. Swings up top, Bean stills the pass away. Bean's got a one-on-one -on -one with gets Wadsworth. Lays it up and in. Wadsworth tried to get in there late. Bean will have none of it. He lays it up, he gets two, and the Aggies up 72 to 50. Justin Bean has broken 20 points. He's got 21 on the night. Timeout on the court, we'll take it. Coach's timeout, 72-50. Aggies up by 22 on the Aggie Sports Network from Learfield IMG College. Utah State over the last eight minutes has blown this game open. We expected it to happen eventually, and now it has. The Small Business Game Changer is here. One local small business has been affected by COVID-19. will have a chance to win a marketing package with Utah State Athletics. More information and registration is available at utahstateaggies.com slash gamechanger. Big thanks to Guilt Mortgage of Logan for sponsoring the Small Business Game Changer. NMLS number 3274, equal housing lender. Well, the, we're at that point, right, where a little bit of the spectrum magic kicks in. <laughs> yeah. The Yotes kind of mi missed a few that they had been making, and, and the Aggies really picked up the pressure, and I think the combination of full court uh, creating that little bit of havoc. Um, and then the Aggies really making uh, completing plays. Galloway inbounds to Wadsworth. Ashworth is right there on him. <laughs> Ashworth wanted to travel on him. They're all about looking at it at the same angle yeah. there. Wadsworth finally gets it to Galloway. Back to Wadsworth on the right wing. Wadsworth kicks it back to time. Time down low to Desaunier. Good matchup. Down low against Dorius. Good Tries to spin. Dorius blocks him. <laughs> And Ashworth keeps it in play to Anderson. What a play. Dorius with the block. Ashworth in play. Ashworth swings it over to Bearstow. Bearstow thought about a three for a moment. Then kicks it back to Ashworth. He'll reset the offense. 
Ashworth comes around to Doria's screen. Up top to Anderson. Back to Ashworth. Ashworth circles left. Then over to Wooster. Wooster gets into lane. Rises, fires, and hits. Raleigh Wooster with a 10-foot jumper. Aggies up 74-50. 8-15 left to go in the game. That's yeah, a great block when you can keep it in bounds, and Doris did that. Long three, missed badly by uh, by oh. Wadsworth. Here comes Anderson away with it. Uh oh, uh oh, ball stolen away, and it is time. Bad pass, Anderson to Ashworth, and time steals it and lays it up and in. Richard Anderson to Ashworth on the inbound, 74-52. Even with that bucket, Aggies on a 30 to seven run. Barstow traveled with it. Yep. They've been calling that close tonight. So another turnover, back-to-back -back turnovers for the Aggies. Lead by 22, 74-52. 7.45 left to go in the game. You're listening to Aggie Basketball from Learfield IMG College. Alongside Lance Beckert, it's your Aggie Basketball. As the Aggies uh, trying to run away and hide here from the uh, College of Idaho, Yotes. 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 Not Coyotes, no. just Yotes. It's just the Yotes, and they're uh, the right now they've uh, they've run out of juice. The Yotes, the Ag the Aggies pressure, uh, uh, you know, it caused a lot of havoc early on as far as um, just using clock and, and and expending a lot of energy from the Yotes. And the Aggies really took advantage of it uh, as they came down and, and uh, really finished plays and, and uh, look look looking good right now. They have a good good flow to them, good feel to them. Aggies. Uh now shooting 62% uh, from the field here in the second half. 10 wow. of 16 from the field. A lot of layups. Yeah. Wadsworth, after the Aggie turnover, has the ball. Ashworth's on him. Bounce pass to DeSaunier. Hands over to Time. Time hammers the dribble. Back to Elsie. Elsie on the left wing. Wooster's on him. Tries to cook on him a little bit, then gets it to Wadsworth. Ball nearly stolen away. Wadsworth still with the ball. Ten seconds on the shot clock. Up against Anderson. Crosses him over. Ball tipped away by Bearstow, but controlled by Galloway. Galloway spins. Galloway puts up a crazy desperation shot. Dorius comes away with a rebound. It's like a redwood in the middle of the lane. Just ripped it down a bunch, a bunch of people way smaller than he is. Great defense by Alfonso. He guarded every player that had the ball yeah. in that possession. A good job by Bearstow knocking that thing away, yes, too. Absolutely. Wooster outside the three-point line. Over to Bearstow. Bearstow trying to reward Dorius, but can't get it to him. So he gets into lane. Pump fake spins, oh. and they're going to hit him with a travel. Yeah, he's got a jump stop. He's uh, He's got a little stutter right there. That Bearstow looks around like, hey, man. That's a good look. Had a good shot. 74-52, three consecutive turnovers on possessions by Utah State, but the Aggies still lead by 22. 74-52, 6.45 and counting. Left to go in the first half. Galloway with the ball now outside the three-point line. Drives, lost the handle. Elzey picks it up, though. Trying to get it to Galloway. Elzey drives on Wooster, then pulls it back. Eight seconds on the shot clock. Five seconds. Elzey drives. Elzey gets in the lane. Dumps it off to DeSaunier. Dorius fouls him on the way up with two seconds on the shot clock. And you're going to see the big man go to the line. Six foot eight, 240-pound senior. I think you could probably add a few more LBs on that 240 with him. COVID related, this is a lot of time off. Good, played almost the whole game. Yeah. And, uh, you know, really physical with, with our post players. I give him a lot of credit. First free throw is up and gets it to go. Used every part of the rim, but finally saw it drop. One more coming up. Oh. Sean Bairstow's checking out. Liam McChesney is coming in. We have not seen him on the court since South Dakota. Second free throw is up and perfect for DeSaunier. Yeah, give, give him a lot of credit. Sorry, Scotty. We give him a lot of credit. He's got, got some stamina. 75-53, 22-point lead for the Aggies. Dorius with the ball. Dorius gets it to Wooster, who curls around the edge. Gets into lane. Gets underneath. Puts a shot up. Missed it. Dorius tries to keep it in play. But Wooster comes away with it. Time steals the entry pass away, and they're going to get Ashworth with a foul. Time's just been kind of uh, picking everybody's pocket there out top of the lane. And he comes away with another steal and uh, comes away with another opportunity here for the Yotes. It's, um, it, it's a tough pass coming from the baseline back to the top of the key, and we're just putting a little too much loft on it. 
you know, allowing that defender to, it's a little bit easier to read and a little easy closeout for some of these athletic guards. Sixth team foul for Utah State. So the Yotes will inbound. Aggies up by 20, 74-54. Largest lead in this game has been 24. Time to Elsie. Elsie back to time. Rises, fires for three. Looks good, is good. Knocks it down. 7-0 run by the Yotes. Has cut the Aggie 24-point lead to 17. Wooster to Ashworth on the right wing. Over to Liam McChesney. McChesney back to Wooster. To Shimon Zapala, and an offensive foul is going to go, I don't know, a travel, another travel. So Shimon gets hit with a travel, and the Aggies continue to turn it over at a high level here in the later part of the game. Yeah, interesting, just a little hop on the post. I mean, it, it was a travel, but a little tough to hear the whistle that, that uh, the officials, uh, two of them are wearing masks. And a little hard to hear. Everyone kept going. Sometimes that could create a problem. But Aggies lead by 17 with five and a half minutes left. As the Yotes not going away too quietly here. Wadsworth on the left wing. Yotes currently on a 7-0 run after the Aggies pushed it to 24. Wadsworth comes around a big screen. Tries to drive against McChesney. Puts the shot up. Missed. Are we calling it a foul? Against, I believe, DeSaunier. And that's going to send the Aggies to the free throw line on a one and one. All right. We'll see how a little shot form check here. Please. Yeah, Shimon only shot one free throw in South Dakota. It was 0 for 1. And he'll step up to the line for a 1-1 one one opportunity. Here comes the free throw and knocks it down. Trevin Doria stands up and gives him a standing ovation. <laughs> Here comes the second free throw by Zapala. And beautiful. Yeah, Interesting form, Coach, but he knocks him down. A little one-hander, but and, and you can see the bench is excited. He's obviously been working on that in practice, right? 76-57 is one free throw attempt in South Dakota was a uh, near air ball. A bit wayward. Yeah. Wadsworth outside the three-point line. Aggie snapped that 7-0 run by the Yotes. Time oh. takes a step back, long three, and Anderson pulls down the rebound on the Aaron shot. Quickly over to Bearstow. 445 and counting left to go here in the game. Bearstow in traffic, takes the jumper, missed it. Anderson comes away with it, and he will finish and draw the foul and get the freebie. Alfonso Anderson gets the bucket and gets an end one opportunity. <laughs> I'm not sure who the student section wanted into the game, but they just got him. Number five. He's Johnny Radford. He's been in the game a lot. Maybe that's who they were asking for. Maybe he said a while. Who knows? Anderson steps up to the line and knocks down the free throw. Alfonso Anderson on the night tonight has got seven points on three of five shooting. 79-57, Aggies on a 5-0 run. Oh, Galloway, yeah. a three-point attempt from <laughs> Menden, misses off the front of the iron, swings it over to Bearstow. Bearstow to Anderson. Anderson wants to drive on Radford, attacks him, and draws the foul, and he'll go back to the free throw line. That's just a man driving up against a young man right there. Right? Did you see his eyes? <laughs> Radford yeah. wanted no part of that. No, I mean, but he couldn't get out of the way. And, and uh, Alfonso, he's uh, done, done a lot of work on his on his body, obviously, in the offseason. And, and, uh, Alfonso Anderson, 6'6", 220. That's listed. Uh, Johnny Radford is, hold on, let me pull the dimensions on him. 60165. And I yeah. think you could probably take about an inch and about 20 pounds off of that. Yeah. It's, uh, and and uh, credit Alfonso, he's really he's really been aggressive with the ball today, you know, attacking the rim and 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 uh, getting himself in either creating a shot for his buddy or free throws. Great shoes. Anderson makes both free throws. Yeah, those are nice shoes. Hey, 8157 Aggies lead by 20 or uh, by 24. Radford with the ball has Fan become favorite. a crowd favorite here. <laughs> Japala defending the post pass, but Wilson's able to spin on him and bank it up and in. 
81-59. Barstow running the point, swings it over to McChesney. Over to Ashworth, Ashworth to Anderson. Anderson on the left wing. Gets it to Shimon, Shimon Sapala. Nice bounce pass to McChesney who lays it up and in. Shimon gave him the eye, gave him the wink and said, dry big fella, bounce past it. And an easy layup, 83-59. What a pass, Coach. Beautiful little pocket pass there, right? Radford with the ball on the left wing. And a foul away from the ball. Is going to go against, I believe, Shimon Sapala. Kata comes out to welcome in his teammates as we got a timeout on the court. 83-59, 3.23 left to go in the game. Aggies cruise into another victory on the Aggie Sports Network from Learfield IMG College. 59, 3.23 left to go in the game. Aggies cruising to a victory. And, Coach, uh, this score, even though at about the eight or nine-minute mark is when the Aggies really pulled away, but there was, a, there was a few nervous Aggie fans tonight in this game. I'm, I'm raising my hands. <laughs> uh, not nervous for the, for the outcome of the game, but – you know, the flow, right, and and the confidence level and different things. But, yeah, I, I think the Aggies have kind of, you know, no, they stayed with their game plan and then had to make an adjustment, and they were able to do that. Um, so good, good job by the Aggies. And now we're seeing bench players come in and, and getting a little bit of that feel good and watching their ball go through the hoop. And you watch the bench, the starters excited. And, you know, this will be a season where we'll need a deep bench. It may not be every game, but there will be spurts and – and uh, situations where we'll need him, so. All right, so Wilson's going to step up to the free throw line, shooting a one and one. Wilson makes the first free throw, and that earns him another one. Where has that dude been all game? That's a good, good little player yeah, there. Yeah, well, Kate has kept him under wraps quite a bit. Yeah, I would imagine he's screwed. Second free throw coming up. That is up, and that is good as well. 83-61, 21-point lead. Ashworth brings the ball up court against Radford. Ashworth to Anderson. Anderson to McChesney. Takes the three. No good, but Anderson comes away with it and will attack the rim, miss it. McChesney comes away with it. He'll dribble out of it. Back to Anderson. Over to Bearstow, who launches the three, and that drops. Sean Bearstow burying the three. Aggies up by 25. 86 61. Offensive rebounds galore for the Aggies. You get an offensive rebound. You get an offensive rebound. Long three on the right wing. Missed. Anderson comes away with it. As Radford couldn't pull it down, couldn't knock it down. Anderson. <laughs> Over to Bearstow. Bearstow attacks to Ashworth. Ashworth to McChesney. Over to Anderson. Anderson cross court to McChesney. Pump fakes the three. Tries to drive. Crossover. Down to Zapala. Bounce pass to Ashworth. Oh. Lost the handle on the way up. And it goes back to the Yotes. Man, he's a great passer. He really is. Holy he's, smokes. Yeah, he's, uh, you know, keeps his eyes up. It's good, good, good position. I'd like to see him make a post move and see what he's got down there footwork wise. Matthew Wickheiser into the game for Utah State. Son of an Aggie legend, Nate Wickheiser. 86-61, 25-point lead for the Aggies. Ball nearly stolen away. O'Neal attacks, and look at that block shot. Zapala says no. Yotes continue to have it. Robinette's underneath the bucket. That is blocked away, but they will call a foul, and Robinette's going to go to the line. So Wickheiser comes in, picks up a quick foul. And stepping up the line will be Robinette, 86-61, 25-point lead for the Aggies with 2.05 left to go in the game. Hey, Sean going out, that's a great one to end yep. on, right? Step yep. in, confident three-pointer, love, love seeing that action. Here comes the free throw. It is up, and it is good. Both free throws oh. knocked down. 86-63. That's a large line. That is a big line for Utah State. <laughs> Zapala, Ashworth, McChesney, Wickheiser, and Zapala. <laughs> Wickheiser with the ball in the elbow, lost the handle, stolen away. And quickly going down the court, the bounce pass down low, stolen away. Ashworth's got it. Ashworth puts his foot on the gas. He wants to challenge. He'll drive. No foul. Out of bounds. 
Utah State's ball. Ashworth was just dying to get to the line on that one. Yeah, a little change of pace might have helped him there. Maybe a Euro step or a little something he can't just. 86-63, yeah. 23-point lead for the Aggies with 141 left to go in the game. Coach's timeout, we'll take it. 30-second timeout. You're listening to Aggie basketball from Learfield IMG College. One left to go in the game. Aggie ball. Ashworth will trigger the inbound. Rudy. <laughs> Trying to get somebody to clear. Gets it to oh. Dorius, who's able to go back and grab it after it fell off his hand. Back to Ashworth. Ashworth outside the three-point line. Comes around a screen and tries to get it to Dorius. Dorius finally collects. Turnaround jumper is up and good. How about that jumper? 88-63. Aggies match their largest lead of 25. Into the game, Jacob Russell, number 32, being guarded by Wickheiser. Tries to get it to number two, Connor Cooper, down low to Wilson. Up top to Robinette. He takes a long three, miss it, and tipped around and controlled by who? Robinette for the Yotes with 105 left to go. And College of Idaho will slow things down here a little bit. 15 seconds on the shot clock and one minute exactly left to go in the game. Jacob Russell, number 32 to Robinette. He launches the long three and won't go. Skying for the rebound as McChesney hands over to Ashworth. Ashworth crossing the timeline. Gets around to Doria's screen. Kicks it back to McChesney. McChesney wants Doria's to come out and set a screen for him. Then takes a step back. Hands back to Ashworth. Ball nearly stolen away. Ashworth's able to collect with 15 seconds on the shot clock. Takes the jumper off the glass. No good, but he draws the foul. And Ashworth's got a chance to pad the stats here a little bit with a couple of free throws coming up. Really had a great game. What a, I mean, at least a homecoming, right? Coming out here at home. It's, it's done a phenomenal job, not just scoring the basketball defensively all around. Really, really spark plug. Great job leading the team. Point guard-esque. Two free throws coming up. First one is good. Six of eight from the line tonight, 15 points. Seven assists. How about that? and two steals. Second free throw, missed. But Ashworth pulls down his own miss. Over to McChesney. McChesney wants to drive, lost the handle, but Dorius is there to collect. Dorius draws the foul, he'll go to the line. 89-63, 26-point lead for the Aggies. 29 seconds left to go in the game. There is your winning team, losing team chance. Doria's free throw, missed. He'll have one more coming up. And knocks it down. Rattle around the horn and finally dropped. And the Aggies break 90. Is that good enough for tacos, coach? Um, hypothetically, by hypothetically, the way, I might have. Yes. No basket. Are they waving it off? We got a lane violation oh, or a foul boy. down low? Yep. There's a foul. Foul is on number 12. Count the free throw. So Zapala, they will count the free throw. Wilson's going to go to the line for a one and one. First free throw is up and good. He'll have one more. 90 to 64. And when the Aggies inbound, they can just run out the clock, and this game will be over. Second free throw. Missed. Dorius comes away with it. I would go gelato at 90 points. There you go. Ashworth crossing the timeline. Jacob Russell. Will pound the... See Ashworth pound the dribble. Five, four, three, two, one. There's your buzzer, and there's an Aggie victory. 90 to 64. Utah State gets the win. Their second win of the season. And it may not have been pretty at time, but the Aggies get it done in blowout fashion and get their second win of the season. Coach, we got a lot of breakdown on the post-game show. This will be an interesting one to talk. Hopefully, we'll have a chance to chat with Stephen Ashworth. We'll chat with uh, Eric Peterson. We'll break this one down. Coming up as your post-game show kicks off next, Utah State 
gets the 90-64 victory on the Aggie Sports Network from Learfield IMG College.